And now let's get back to the observe on, on the UI thread because I'm very curious that, man, if you say something new about it, it's kind of the whole world is going to just collapse. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, this mainly came about. I was looking at uh, the reviews for the work that Juma did on the his screen lock thing, and I saw you were putting on that you should add observe on UI thread. Uh, so I understand why you want to do that, but the thing is, on Juma's uh, work, he doesn't have any code that interacts with anything apart from UI code. So none of his reactive commands, I mean, they're always triggered by the UI, so they're always on the UI thread. As far as I can see, none of his code interacts with anything that is off the UI thread. So adding those calls will just cause um, very minor performance hits, like cause some extra allocations and I would prefer that we try to go for an approach where we we are really thinking about which thread things are coming from. And there's quite an easy way to tell is usually if the if what you're subscribing to is either in the back end or it's coming from an event, then that's the point, the time then you really need to just check what thread it could be coming from. If it's from a reactive command um, or, or it's just a, a normal property, most of the time, you know, in, in fact, if there's any time when it's not on the UI thread, then we've, we've probably done something wrong elsewhere. And the approach of just putting um, observe on UI thread, thread on every property is kind of a, you know, it it's just kind of a belts and braces approach. But I prefer that we were more, if possible, we could be more just use it when we have to, you know? Uh, yes, I am partly agree and partly disagree because the okay. code is going to be copy-pasted and uh, it's going to run perfectly on Windows and Linux, but it always fails on Mac and that's the only platform that we don't have a developer at. And, you know, it's very sneaky. Now, what I agree on is that regarding reactive command, commands and constructors, those two I identified for certainty that they don't need observe on the UI thread, but almost for everything else you do, or if you don't, then you specify that you are observing on the task pool scheduler. Yeah, not on the UI, not on the main thread scheduler. Uh, that, that works well. So there is no ambiguity of a where should it really go, you know? But for reactive comments and constructors, it's unnecessary. And that was stupid of me of doing the output scheduler thing that doesn't even do what I thought it does. So yeah, I, I acknowledge that. So uh, when you say the constructors, you mean subscribing to properties um, inside the constructor? So we can expect that in the constructor, whatever you do is going to happen on the UI thread. Yeah. If it's a view, if we're talking about view models, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. But but for even subscriptions and things like that, you should specify that what oh, thread you no. want. Yeah, I completely agree. If it's an event subscription or it's anything that's to do with global or anything that's external outside of UI, yeah, completely agree. We should definitely use it then. Uh, my only concern is sometimes we're just subscribing to a property on its own view model, and I don't think it's necessary in that case. Very similar to the reason why it's not necessary for reactive command. It's, it's necessary when you're subscribing on to a property on their view model, uh, because that subscription might have asynchronous code, and that asynchronous code might have uh, configure a weight, and that configure a weight might change the thread. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good idea to specify 
the observer on things. Uh, what are you really observing on? And I've seen strange things when it's not just that you have to you have to update the UI the the UI element uh, on the UI thread, but you have to touch that UI element on the UI thread. Uh, this is this was the issue with my you know do you remember I was creating a backing field and yeah. that backing field was modified on not the UI element so the not backing sorry that backing field was you modified on the task pool scheduler and the not backing field the real field was modified on the UI and actually that fucked it up on OS X so the backing field even the backing field had to be touched on the on the UI so there was no need for backing field anymore because that would be the goal of the backing field to not be on the UI it okay I'll have one more attempt to persuade you but okay the really whatever it was that was touching that property from background thread normally what you would do is you would post that activity to the UI thread to touch that property rather than people listening to the property properties or always um, dispatching to the UI thread you know it it's almost like we should move I'm, I'm kind of just suggesting we should move the post to the UI thread to the other side so rather than the listener listening on the UI thread anybody that is modifying the property should post it to the UI thread you know yeah no the other way around posting to the UI thread is asynchronous and it happens in a synchronous context and that gets really really bad you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay then, um, yeah. No, I think you you probably got some good reasons, and it doesn't do too much harm to have it in. So okay, I'm happy. I I agree with the reactive command and the constructor. Maybe there are others I'm not aware of, but I identify these two case uh, definitely doesn't need to to be specified. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah.